Historic records prove the secret intensification of the biological weapons race in America make the Soviet efforts pale by comparison. Here to prove it are three of the most stunning and condemning documents in biological warfare history. First is a never declassified congressional record of 1969 showing the Department of Defense requested $10 million to develop, quote, synthetic biological agents for germ warfare, end quote, through the National Academy of Sciences, National Research Council, that is the NAS, NRC. That's nearly half of the amount of money given to all of biological weaponry that year. These new laboratory creations were descriptively and functionally identical to HIV AIDS. Mind you, this was 15 years before the contested discovery of the AIDS virus by this man, Dr. Robert Gallo, who, as you will see in a minute, oversaw Lytton Bionetics, the Army's sixth leading biological weapons contractor at that time. Bionetics also operated the entire administration of the National Cancer Institute's programs at Fort Detrick at that time as well. This private company was a medical subsidiary of the mega military weapons contractor called Lytton Industries. Lytton's president, Roy Ash, was Nixon's alternate for the National Security Advisor post he gave to Kissinger. In consolation, the president made Ash his White House chief of the American business and industry. As Roy Ash was joining the Nixon White House staff, Kissinger ordered Admiral Sumwalt of the Navy to do a reassessment of America's biological weapons capabilities. The Navy has always been at the forefront of such things. Bioweapons were cheaper to make and could be made to target certain people, even certain ethnic groups. There is no doubt that Fort Detrick's sudden cancer focus was part of a greater depopulation plan. According to Congressional Records and his biographer, Time Magazine's managing editor, Walter Isaacson, Kissinger selected the option presented by Admiral Zumwalt to develop AIDS-like and Ebola-like bioweapons, and the contract went to his White House colleague's company, Lytton Bionetics. There is now no doubt that Dr. Gallo officiated the development of these AIDS complex viruses. His group at Bionetics combined leukemia, lymphoma, and sarcoma viruses from various species of animals nearly 15 years before he was credited by the Department of Health and Human Services for having discovered the cause of AIDS, a similar retrovirus. They said this would lead to a cure, an AIDS vaccine within three years. It never happened. I managed to catch up to Dr. Gallo at the 11th International Conference on AIDS in Vancouver in 1997. I asked him if he was concerned that some of his experiments might have given rise to the AIDS virus or AIDS virus relatives that might have contaminated monkeys and chimpanzees shipped by Lytton to the Merck's vaccine division in New York for the production of the earliest hepatitis B vaccines. Here is the exchange Dr. Gallo eventually apologized to me for he was obviously aggravated. Do you have any concern that your early experiments in taking simian virus 40 in the presence of simian foamy retroviruses uh, and recombining them with cat leukemia and chicken leukemia sarcoma viruses might have given rise to HIV or its relatives following their culture in human tissues and that these mutants could have contaminated some live viral vaccines produced in contaminated monkeys and chimps supplied to vaccine manufacturers through your affiliates at Lytton Bionetics. Quite frankly, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'll cite your paper, Dr. Gallo. If you can, you, you've, got uh, a paper, you've got a paper that I don't know I ever published. Uh, okay. I'd sure like you to cite it. Would you begin I'd now? be happy to. Well, uh, National Academy of Sciences, 1970, Gallo et al. It was an oral presentation that you presented before NATO, NATO and NATO audiences in 19, in Mall, Belgium. You, you published it. It's in the yeah, National Academy. So I'll be happy to show you the paper. Stop, stop. I mean, this is, it, is beyond asinine. In Mall, Belgium, my first trip to Europe, so I can remember it, 
a NATO meeting did take place. NATO meetings fund all scientific meetings all over, all over the world, even east-west at that time. Biologic meetings, scientific chemistry meetings, all kinds of meetings. Meetings about motherhood, fatherhood, everything. And what I talked about in Mole, Belgium, was in the 1960s, long before gene cloning took place, l before I ever worked in virology. What I talked about was cellular transfer RNA, okay? And this, that's, that's well, Mole, Belgium. Proceedings in the National Academy of Science, an SB40, I never published a paper in my life, an SB40, except the transfer RNA species. An SB40 transformed hamster cells compared to non-transformed cells as a control. You've got pineapples, kiwis, grapes, and cherries mixed in with some other tutti frutti. I don't know what in the hell you're talking about. Uh, and, and, excuse me. Tired okay. of this kind of nonsense okay. crap. And Gallo, Sarin et al. were Litton Bionetics researchers were your co-authors in which you combined cat leukemia and chicken sarcoma viruses to, to create, uh, me, to, yeah, to evaluate the okay, leuke oh, sorry, leukemia yes, sarcoma complex all. models. I mean, really smart. Yes, we did. It. Everything I mean, was created by us working in the laboratory. Look, just for those with some, re some little bit of understanding of this who care about this, uh, kind of idea. I've never, I, I mean, I've had a lot of things said, but I've never had anything quite like that one. There were people who thought and made postulations that, in the, it was not, not actually directed at me, this is a good one, a new one, but that HIV could have been created in laboratory <coughs> experiments. There are two answers to that that are definitive, conclusive, that no scientist could have deliberately created them unless he was a super genius and 10 years ahead of his time. The AIDS virus definitively existed long before molecular cloning. That's point one. Point two, we know the full sequence, the genome of HIV. It was published by our lab in 1985 and by a group from Paris the same, around the same time. The genome has no homology to any known existing virus in the world, except SIV discovered after it, has nothing to do with cats, has nothing to do with chicken sarcoma viruses. SV40 is a DNA virus that comes from little animals that can transform cells and culture, has no sequences in HIV. Further, we never worked with SV40 with those viruses together, and if we did, the whole thing would be irrelevant. And I think you need to begin with Biology 101 High School, okay? These documents, including the U.S. government contracts, best explain how AIDS emerged on two far-removed continents in black Africans and gay New Yorkers by 1978. These were precisely the populations that received the first hepatitis B vaccines produced in Lytton's chimpanzees just four years earlier. By the way, the man sitting to Dr. Robert Gallo's right is Dr. Jonathan Mann. At the time, Dr. Mann was the AIDS czar for the World Health Organization. Not long after Dr. Mann witnessed my exchange with Gallo, he quit his most esteemed position saying, quote, far more than a medical problem, AIDS is a socio-political imposition, end quote. <laughs>